So we have so much to cover in this video today. I'm going to start with my new Italian photograph set. And this is specifically for use with composite images. All you do is come to my website, click on photographer store, and you're going to scroll to digital backdrops, click here. And once you get in here, you're going to see I have all these packages, most of them in the recent while are all AI but this one particular set here is actually from my trip to Italy I just got back a couple of weeks ago and these are just I think 11 of the images that I decided to offer to everyone else they're all 300 dpi and specifically for use with composites. So they are some of the most amazing borgos and small villages and towns in Abruzzo. And here's a couple examples of the images that I've done with them so far. But I wanted to share that with you in case you were so interested in picking them up and doing your own. The first software I want to talk to you about today is Rebel 7, currently on sale from $465 Canadian to $50 Canadian. Now, I just learned about this a few days ago, and I can't even express to you how incredible it is. Run, don't walk, grab this software. I'll show you more later. Now, the next one I want to talk to you about is going to be Boris FX, and Boris FX is a plugin. It's been around for a really long time, but Renee Robin sent it to me and asked me to check it out. And I have found some techniques used for painting that make this the most amazing little filter that you could possibly use to embellish your paintings. For this demo, I am going to start with using Boris FX Optics. And I just want to show you what this particular painting effect can do within this software okay now keeping in mind that boris effects is capable within optics of doing a multitude of different things i'm not going to show you that today however you know it's got light leaks and um, special effects like lightning all kinds of super fun stuff so it's a fairly robust software program and for me, because my style always leans towards more of a painterly effect as opposed to photographic, um, I found that this is the one that really, really was game changer for me. Now, this particular filter or plugin or whatever you want to call it, for me, what it did was it took my pattern stamp tool paintings and it really truly converted them into looking more like a three-dimensional painting which blew my mind so i really wanted to share this with those of you that enjoy painting digitally and specifically for those that are into the pattern stamp tool and it specifically i feel like just really changes everything if you're like me and you love the pattern stamp tool so if you want to learn how to use a pattern stamp tool, I would highly recommend that you join my platform. I've got several courses up there. Most of my courses on the platform really do delve more into painting, digital painting techniques, most recently digital drawing. But this is one that I feel is a game changer for those of you who like to have your paintings look like there's actual lacquer attached to your painting. Now, also, if you love this effect, it's really, really, really good if you're going to print on fine art paper and you're going to glaze it and make it truly look like a painting, right? Okay, so let's delve into it. So I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to show you the type of texture that you get using this particular filter within Boris FX Optics. Now, with my pattern stamp tool, when I'm creating florals like this, I do have some flowers that have textures. So you can see the really robust textures and I do have some that don't. But for this one, I did use my texturized floral brushes and I'll show you a couple of other examples and then I'll show you exactly how it works. Just for a conversation, this is an AI image. I did not take this. But what I did was I did some basic pattern stamp tool embellishments on this. And this is my second embellishment. So this is my first layer. This is my second layer. And after I was happy with the effects using the pattern stamp tool, I went into 
Boris effects and in optics and this is what I got. So once again you can see that we really get some beautiful three-dimensional paint strokes and with emphasis on the florals which is what I love and even up here it truly looks like it was painted with oils. Now Here's another one of Asha and I did the same thing. So this one I did my pattern stamp florals and I created this symmetrical circle and I did the same thing on this one. So if you zoom in, you can really see that most of the florals will look more three-dimensional. Okay. And again, if you're interested in how to use the pattern stamp tool or I should be more clear how I use it, please join my platform. And then this, another just basic AI image, right? And what I did was I went in and I hand painted it in the next layer using the mixer brush so that it ended up looking like this. And then I also went in with my pattern stamp tool floral brushes and I created some flowers. I even painted on the feathers. And then I came in with optics and I did that. And then basically I just did the rest of my edits to make it look like this okay so for my demo showing you how i use this particular filter i'm going to use this image of sierra and you can see that i've done my basic pattern stamp tool on the background of this image already however for this to really work well i tend to use another brush and the brush is more little bits and bobs and pieces and by using that as a final floral step in this particular style, I'm going to come up to my patterns and I'm going to choose this image that I made a pattern out of and I'm going to come over to my brushes and I'm going to actually choose little bits and bobs and pieces which is right here. I do have these brushes for sale in my store as well. And what I'm going to do is I'll just on a blank layer, make sure Impressionist is turned on as always. And I'm going to come in here and just using the colors that already exist in this image, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add these little bits and bobs to the florals that I really want to be more three dimensional in the final image. And this is where you'll get that really amazing effect that you want. And I find anyway for me that using this particular brush really is the key to making this look the way it's meant to look. You know, some floral brushes are just, you know, a little bit too soft and don't have enough definition to the actual petals like this one itself does. So you will get some pretty remarkable results. Now, what you can do as well is using this brush, not as a pattern stamp tool, but just as a brush, you can also come in and affect those flowers a little bit more by adding in some lighter, just straight colors. And I'll show you that. So for instance, if I go into my brushes now and go to the same brush, right here. Now it's just a brush, it's not the pattern stamp tool. If I choose this color, for instance, I can make it a much lighter color. I can reduce my flow so it's not too incredibly strong. And then if I come in and just lightly dab it, now we're just going to get a little bit more interest, kind of like in the highlights of these. And this is really going to help it really truly stand out. And this is all I do. These are the things that I teach on my platform so that you really truly understand what I'm doing. And if you're unfamiliar with painting or you're unfamiliar with the pattern stamp tool or just basic painting, then this probably is going to be like Chinese to you at this point. But in saying that, I'm also telling you that, you know, you can sit down and learn this stuff relatively quickly. It's not rocket science whatsoever. Okay, so we're just adding a little bit more detail to these florals. These ones back here, we won't so much because obviously being that they're further away from our subject, they wouldn't be quite as sharp, right? So I would come in and change, you know, just the hue and perhaps the brightness of that brush a little bit here and there, just so that you get a bit of range and believability in this. 
Okay, I'm going to say that's good enough. I'm going to actually reduce my opacity a little bit because we don't want it to be too crazy compared to the original that we did. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate my background layer and I'm going to merge these layers together like so. Now, all you do is you go filter Boris Effects Optics. It always asks you if you want to apply the previous filter. I'm just going to say no because I was using other things. And I've got this saved in my favorites, but I do believe... So under light, it's under key light. So once you hit key light, you're going to have two of these options. And the one that I use is called parallel. Now, if you zoom in to your image and in this, you can't do your usual way of zooming in. I just grab this and I zoom in so I can see how much this particular effect is affecting the area that I want to affect. And that looks good. This is the basic kind of default strength of 50, but you can increase it as well if you want. And don't be afraid to play with this, you know, as much or as little as you want. So 57 looks good enough for me. I'm going to click apply. Okay, so once it's finished rendering and it comes back into Photoshop, you're going to have this effect. Okay, now keeping in mind that it does the entire image. So I always hold down my Alter Option key and click Mask. And then I like to grab a white brush, usually around 50% opacity. And I just paint it onto the areas that I want it to be. So I usually just start, you know, working on the areas where it would be sharper if this was more photographic because it does tend to look a little bit more realistic if you do it this way. So just all around our subject over here for sure. Everywhere where you possibly painted those florals. And I have used this on other painting styles where it's not necessarily f like florals that you're painting. Um, if you are working, you know, with, uh, you want more paint dabs and paint daubs, it does help with that as well. Although in the next program, if you're just looking for paint daubs and spackles and splatters and stuff, um, I'll show you how amazing the next software is for that. But you can still use this one if you want. And then just, you know, use your X key and get rid of maybe some of the stuff that you don't want anyways. All right. And that is how I do it. It's super easy. I always go into my properties for my mask and feather it out. But yeah, that just helps your painting or your painterly image look a little bit more like an actual painting. And I'm telling you, print this on fine art paper, even if you're not going to embellish it with more paint and gesso or any kind of medium, it still prints and looks like an actual painting, especially on fine art paper. All right. So that is that. So the next thing we're going to get into is going to actually be this other software. Okay. Now, I have been doing digital painting for a long, long time, but I also have worked with traditional art as far as watercolors, acrylics, gouache, things like that. I haven't personally done any oil painting, but I sure can now. So I'm just going to show you this. So this, I'm going to zoom in. This is a fairy portrait that I did, and then I also used digital art to draw the wings and a lot of other fun stuff. But I just want you to take a look at the paint splashes and daubs and splatters. Now, this looks like real, actual, true, true, true painting. And I can't even express to you what this software is capable of. I mean, if you're a full-blown artist, whether you're traditional or digital or whatever, this is the most incredible software I have ever come across. I feel like it blows everything out of the water, including Corel or Procreate or anything, okay? This is painting. You can still draw in it, but, you know, I would say probably Procreate is better for digital drawing as opposed to painting. 
the painting features in the software blew me away. Here's another one. So what I've done is I've taken fairy portraits that I've done from client work and I've I always like to make them look like paintings and look at what this does. It just completely transformed it from a very cute little fantasy kind of themed portrait to a painting. And you can choose your canvas color and texture and everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump right on into this software super quick. And the software, as I showed you initially, is called Rebel seven okay i was just playing around just to see what this software is capable of i just did a little uh, water color painting like this but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open up i'm going to do a new document so i'm going to get rid of this and when you put your new artwork you decide what size you want it to be what your color profile is that you want to be um, anything like that, 300 DPI, you know, whether you want landscape or portrait. And this is my default that I find that I'm working with. So I'm just going to click OK. And it's going to create this new canvas for me. Now, keeping in mind the canvas, albeit the background, it comes with various papers that you can choose from. And to get to it, you just click on the select canvas thing here. And these are the preloaded texture canvases that come with it or papers. Now keeping in mind you can always choose get more and you can go get some more. But what I love about this is you can choose so many different aspects. So let's say I wanted a really rough canvas and I didn't want it to be simply white. If I wanted it to be more of a beige, let's say something like that. And your texture scale, so you can have your texture larger or you can have it smaller. I think for me, it just depends on the size of the image. So wait, right here it shows you it's at 195%, but I'm just gonna put it at 100% of scale and use deckled edges, because I love the deckled edges, and the paper high maps. Now the high map allows you to paint so that it only touches the high maps, so the very tips of the texture of the paper. I'll show you that right now. Click OK. So once it loads that paper, this is it here, you can see that you can make that texture even larger if you wanted, but I find for me anyway, 100% is good. So what if you want, if you wanted to paint your own painting, obviously you would come in here, you would choose your um, oils and acrylics, your express oils, your watercolors, inks, pencils, this is pastels, this is markers, this is airbrushing, and then these are your favorites. So make sure you mark your favorites when you find them, just easier to find. But I'm not going to do a full tutorial on Rebel 7 Pro right now, only because I've only been working with this for a few days, but it is on sale right now for a ridiculously cheap amount. So I'm in Canada and it's regularly $465 on sale for $47, okay? And that's for the Pro. So you get everything that you see here. And I'm telling you for that price, it just really makes me wonder what the heck are we doing with Photoshop, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna import an image. We're just gonna use Merida. So this one I think is nice and colorful. And we'll use this one of Merida because I think it'll, it'll turn out quite well. So I'm just gonna make the canvas right about there. And you know what, for this, I'm definitely gonna go back into my canvas and I'm gonna choose black. And I'm actually going to make my texture scale a little bit bigger and then I'm just going to change it. And so with this, your texture scale in the background always can be changed. So whenever you're working in layers, you can do whatever you want to do and you can always go back and change your canvas, color, all of that stuff. It's very flexible that way. Now with this, it's a lot like Photoshop in the fact that you work with layers, you can work with masks, you can do virtually whatever you're already comfortable with. So the learning curve I'm finding anyway, since I've only been using it for a few days, is not very strong uh, at all. So it makes it very nice to work with. So right here, this first layer is Merida. Okay, so this is our our photographic print that I pulled into this program. 
So you can do this a couple of different ways. You could add a layer above Merida and paint over top of this. You could also add a layer mask and paint it off. So for that, let's do that. So right click on your layer and it's going to say add a layer mask. All right. So when you bring your image in, it's going to come in photographically. Okay, but under your visual settings that you can find right down here, you have the ability to actually add texture to your subject on your photograph as well. So let's just zoom in here. So if you ever want to save all of your layers with the three dimensional splotches that you can make, etc., make sure that you have nano pixel turned on here. Okay, now in here you can increase your paint texture and also your your paint texture here. So the higher you go up with your paint texture, the more texture that you're actually going to have on your person here. See what I mean? So I mean you might want that. You might think that that works really well with this particular look especially if you're printing this on sorry I gotta turn off my platform is beeping um, especially if you want your painting to look more painterly so you're gonna get that paper texture as well so I'll just reduce it a wee bit something like that is good and especially if you've done a lot of retouching on let's say on your subject right then you might want to keep it at a five or a six because it's going to look more realistic as far as a painting is concerned. All right, so let's just zoom out. And I'm just going to turn my visual settings off and you can always find them back down here. So like I said, we're going to add a layer mask. Make sure you are working with a black brush and I'm for this one you can use watercolor I'm just going to use my oil and acrylics and then these are your brushes over here all right you've got knives flat round all kinds and for these ones I usually like to use just a basic dapper and as far as the size of your brush is concerned only your bracket keys work so you can't use if you're used to using like control command you can't really do that now, keeping in mind, too, that your opacity is really going to affect this. So for brush opacity, you're going to find it right under loading. And I usually turn that down to about 20. And then you're just going to come in here and try to get rid of those very, very edges that you don't want it to show, right? Like you're going to kind of blend it into the paper so that the paper edges are more prominent and I usually come in and just get rid of that very harsh line first that's usually my goal because once I get rid of that harsh line then I can reduce my opacity and really start working on more of a nice soft transition. I just really want to get rid of that hard line first. And now we can reduce our opacity a little bit more. And now when we come in with a reduced opacity, we can really concentrate on feathering out those edges and making it look like it's all part of it. So this is the nice thing that I'm actually really liking about this is that it's not so far off of Photoshop and its basic functions that it's like, oh no, I got to learn a whole new software all over again. Because, you know, I have to say for me, that's probably one of the reason why I have tried to really focus on painting in Photoshop because I know it so well that I didn't want to have to spend the time to learn another software. But this one is so worth it. And 
the reason why I wanted to show you this is because even if you're not a painter, but you just want photo photos to be more painterly, but with a more realistic painting effect and not just those really yucky painting filters that you get in Photoshop or actions or things like that. This just really, truly is a fun way to do it. Okay, so once you've done that, now you can start working on just adding some embellishments and what have you to this. Just minimize my visual settings and I'm going to zoom out on this. So once you have your image set up like this, you have your paper texture, everything is good to go. Then you just need to decide what your creative process would be, right? Now I'm going to show you something that perhaps is going to maybe blow you away. We're going to go into the metallics for all of the splatters that we'll do, but I want to show you really quickly the watercolor. So up here, this is your watercolor brush. Okay. This is your opacity of your watercolor. And this is how much water you want on your brush, which is absolutely incredible. That's what we're going to show you right now. So I'm going to choose a bright color. So something in this effect here, and I'm going to make my brush pretty big. And the reason for that is because I'm going to start just embellishing around these edges like so. Now, this here is the direction that the water is going to drain down like this over here. You're going to dry the layer and that'll stop the water from melting into your image. And I'm telling you, I'm having so much fun with this. I can't even with how much fun this is. And then you can reduce the opacity of that so that you're just left with a very subtle, subtle effect and start a new one and you're still on that same brush and you just need to kind of go a little bit like this. Now what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to choose my visual settings again right here and we're going to open this up. So if we look over here under our watercolor behavior like right here, you're going to see drip size and drip length, right? So this one right here you can see that when, when I did that, it's not doing anything, but that's because I, I clicked dry. So I'm going to choose wet the layer again. And once you do that, you can see and watch all that lovely water just start to drip again like that. Right. But if you look over here, you've got drip size, drip length. You've also got strength and density of your granulation. All right. And there's also darkened edges. Now that is something that I prefer to have down quite a way. You have a texture influence here and all of these are just basic, right? So I'm just going to dry that now. And as soon as you hit dry the layer, it'll stop. And then once again, you can just reduce the overall opacity. And if you want to delete a layer, you just click the minus button right there. Okay, so we're going to delete that one because it's not our fave. Something like that. And we'll start over from the beginning because I don't want such extreme drips on this. Okay, so into my drip size, I'm going to bring that down quite low and my drip length quite low. So two and two. And I'm going to kind of minimize my texture influence and I definitely don't want my edges being darked, darkened like that. So now we're going to try it again. We're just going to come in and do some little rough kind of swoops. And I tend to do this like this and then I just watch all of it go. So you can see that the strength of the falling of the water goes like this and I tend to add more again. So when it starts doing that, because I don't want all of that to disappear completely, I'll just come in and add more so that we get some really interesting results. Okay. And once you do that, you come over here and you dry your layer so that it stops it. Right. And then you can, 
just adjust your opacity. And what's really cool is just like in Photoshop, if you wanted to, you could do the same. You could duplicate the layer, flip it, and put it over on the other side. But why would you do that when you can just have it so much fun? Let's choose this color. And we're going to come in here and do the same thing with a different color. And just remember that the more paint that you put on this here, as the water falls, so I'll grab a darker blue, and then sometimes I'll grab even a darker blue, like this, so that once the water starts falling on this, it actually will blend a little bit better with that black edge. Like so. And then anytime you want to dry it, I usually watch it pretty good right about there. And then just reduce your opacity. Right? So now you get the general idea. So let's do a new layer and try and perhaps we're going to turn the direction of the water up so that it doesn't get rid of that beautiful black edge here. So now we're just going to paint over this like so. And now instead of running down the page, it's going to run up the page this way. So if we went a little bit lighter, let's say here, like that, the water now goes up so it's not going to pull away from the edge of the paper. And we could go a little bit lighter down here. And then it runs up the paper. It's like if you were tilting your page, you know, towards the top of your paper. So something like that. And maybe a little bit lighter down here. You could even come in on this side and add a little bit here. And the longer that you leave it doing that, the more it'll just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. It's not actually going to stop until you dry your layer, which is very interesting. Okay, and you don't have to really have a whole massive amount of painting skill in order to get something super cool to do this. It's not necessary to be really, really good at this. And then, like I said, just dry your layer and then reduce your opacity and get all kinds of cool results. Okay, so that's that. And so, of course, you'd want to do that all the way around and just play and get all kinds of crazy results. But I'll show you the metallic splatter layer, which is just so much fun. So we're going to go back into our visual settings and we're going to come into our color. We're in our color set and we just want to make sure that we have our metallics chosen, which we do like that and now we still have this kind of bright fuchsia but we're gonna grab we're gonna go into our oils and acrylics and we're going to go to splats down under metallic here and again you're gonna want this brush to be pretty big and so if you start putting some splatters just over top of this and you can see that it chooses the splatter based on the color that it's affecting right I like to tell it to do what I want it to do, so I'm just holding my option key down. I'm just going to redo that because it's getting too carried away on its own. So choose your color and you can see how incredibly raised that really is.
So I just think, you know, and I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg with this yet. I really, truly haven't. But I just really wanted to tell any of you guys that are into painting and things like that, just go grab it. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve. I know it is for me, but just the possibilities alone have me so freaking excited. I can't even with it. So pattern stamp tool painting, if you're using that, go get Boris effects optics I highly highly suggest it um, for this one get it now because it's on sale and honestly if you never use it it's not like you're gonna be out a whack ton of money so just get it but if you think that this is something that you would like to sit down with even in your downtime for personal hobby reasons go grab it I'm going to really delve into it and learn it and for those that do purchase it and you're a student on my platform, I'm going to start offering tutorials on it because like, come on, this is, it's a lot to learn. And every day that I've had it, I've had oh wow moments where, okay, that makes sense. You know, you have to learn how to export it properly so that all of these beautiful textures in your paint daubs like this actually export and you can export it directly into Photoshop. You can go back and forth from Photoshop back into Rebel 7. It's it's just nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And I highly encourage you to use it and try it, but I will update for sure. I have quite a few shoots planned this fall and my husband and I did purchase a home in Italy. So we will be spending six months a year there and I'm dying to show you my new little town and hoping to do a bunch of really cool shoots there as well. So stay tuned. Until then, I hope everybody in Florida stay safe and have a great October. Chat soon.